Hi guys, welcome to Empower and my name is Caroline Porter Thomas. Thank you so much as usual for watching my YouTube channel. So I got a video request from Brittany Manzuk who said, thank you so much for your videos. I really enjoy them. Would love to see content on thyroid disorders and how to lessen the severity of their side effects via pharmaceuticals and diet. So Brittany, thank you for your video request. I do hope that you like the video we prepared for you. Remember guys to keep posting your video requests below. It has also come to my attention that a lot of patients are watching this video. So if you see something that you would like to know more about, please also let us know. As nurses in this medical community, we are also here for you. So feel free to watch and we hope that you also learn a lot. All right, guys, so without any further ado, let's get started and let's go over thyroid disorders. The thyroid gland is located at the front of the neck. This gland secretes hormones that govern many functions in the body, such as the way the body uses energy or consumes oxygen and produces heat. Thyroid disorders usually occur when this gland produces too much or too few hormones. An overactive or underactive thyroid can lead to a wide range of health problems. Hyperthyroidism. Remember, whenever you see the letters hyper in front of a word, it means too much of. Hyperthyroidism. This is when the thyroid gland is producing too much thyroid hormone. Causes. There are several causes of hyperthyroidism. Most often, the entire gland is overproducing thyroid hormone. Less commonly, a single nodule is responsible for the excess hormone secretion. The most common cause of hyperthyroidism is Graves' disease. This is an autoimmune disease where the body makes an antibody called thyroid stimulating immunoglobin. This causes the thyroid gland to make too much thyroid hormone. Thyroiditis can be another cause. This is inflammation of the thyroid. Remember, whenever you see the words itis at the end of a word, this means infection or inflammation. Functional thyroid tissue producing an excess of thyroid hormone occurs in a number of clinical conditions. Hyperthyroidism may be asymptomatic or present with significant symptoms. A mnemonic to help you remember the potential symptoms of hyperthyroidism is sweating. The signs and symptoms can include sweating, weight loss, emotional instability, appetite increase, tremor, irritability, nervousness, gastrointestinal problems, and more frequent bowel movements. More frequent bowel movements may occur but diarrhea is uncommon. Also, treatment for hyperthyroidism usually involves medication to reduce the amount of hormones produced by the thyroid. We will go over the medication treatments in a bit. Hypothyroidism, which is also called myxedema. But remember, whenever you see the letters hypo in front of a word, this means not enough of or a low amount. Hypothyroidism is a thyroid disorder that occurs when the thyroid does not produce enough hormones, which is the opposite opposite of hyperthyroidism. People with hypothyroidism often have no or only mild symptoms. Numerous symptoms and signs are associated with hypothyroidism and can be related to the underlying cause or a direct effect of not having enough thyroid hormones. Some of the symptoms of hypothyroidism can be easily remembered by using the mnemonic MOMS TIRED, which includes memory loss, goiter, menorrhagia, which means abnormal heavy bleeding, administration, skin dryness, tiredness, intolerance to cold, restlessness, energy levels are low, and depression. This condition can be treated using a drug called T4. Most patients must stay on T4 for their entire lives and must be closely monitored by physicians. T4 is the synthetic form of the thyroid stimulating hormone. It is made by many different pharmaceutical companies sold under numerous names like Synthroid, Levothyroxine Sodium, and Levixol to name a few. Causes. Most of the time, hypothyroidism is caused by an adequate function of the gland itself, which is known as primary hypothyroidism. It could be caused by not enough stimulation by thyroid stimulating hormone, which is known as central hypothyroidism. Primary hypothyroidism is much more common than central hypothyroidism. Iodine deficiency is the most common cause of primary hypothyroidism. In areas of the world with sufficient dietary iodine, hypothyroidism is most commonly caused by the autoimmune disease Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Pathophysiology. The thyroid gland is the only source of thyroid hormone in the body. The process requires iodine and amino acid tyrosine. Iodine in the bloodstream is taken up by the gland and incorporated into the thyroid 
hemoglobin molecules. The process is controlled by the thyroid stimulating hormone, which you will see abbreviated as TSH, which is secreted by the pituitary gland. Not enough iodine or not enough TSH can result in decreased production of thyroid hormones. Thyroid nodules. Thyroid disorders can also occur because of thyroid nodules, which are growths on the gland. These growths can be solid or filled with fluid. There can be a single nodule or cluster of nodules. These small growths are usually harmless and can go undetected for years. They can sometimes even be palpated. At times, thyroid nodules can be cancerous. The doctor may order an ultrasound, fine needle aspiration biopsy, blood and other laboratory tests, or the thyroid scan. If the nodules are not cancerous, then no treatment may be necessary. Sometimes they may need to be removed. Cancerous nodules always need to be removed, followed by treatment as recommended by an oncologist. Causes. A thyroid nodule may be caused by Hashimoto's disease, hypothyroidism, or thyroid cancer. Medications. Medications for hyperthyroidism. This includes beta blockers. This class of medications works by blocking many of the body's responses to hyperthyroidism. It can decrease tremor, nervousness, and agitation. It can also reduce the fast heart rate. Beta blocker tablets are prescribed to a patient with mild to moderate symptoms of hyperthyroidism and may be given an IV preparation to a person with the severe form of hyperthyroidism or a patient having a thyroid toxic crisis, which is also called a thyrotoxic storm. Profithiol uracil is an antithyroid drug that works by blocking the thyroid hormone synthesis. It takes several months after the start of the medication for the full therapeutic effect to be achieved. The US FDA has issued guidance that this drug should only be used during the first trimester of pregnancy or if there is an intolerance to methamazole. Methamazole is the preferred antithyroid drug in everyone except women in the first trimester of pregnancy for hyperthyroidism. This antithyroid drug also works by blocking the thyroid hormone synthesis. It may take slightly longer than prophothyuracil to achieve its full effect. Radioactive iodine. This medication can be taken via tablet and since the thyroid absorbs most of the iodine in the body, there is almost no exposure to the rest of the body. Essentially, this treatment shrinks or destroys the thyroid gland. In cases where patients suffer from a thyroid crisis, which is also known as a thyroid storm, this may be the best option. This can essentially cause hypothyroidism, however, this condition is much less dangerous and easier to treat. Now the treatment for hypothyroidism. L-thyroxine, this medication is the most popular thyroid hormone replacement therapy in hypothyroidism. This is the synthetic form of thyroxine, essentially it is the same hormone that the thyroid makes. The body tissue converts it to the active product l chirodiathyroxinine Side effects are rare and has an excellent safety record. Chirothyroxinine, this is rarely used alone as thyroid hormone replacement because it has a much shorter persistence in the blood than L-thyroxine. It can cause rapid increase in trithyroxine concentration, which can be dangerous in the elderly and in people with cardiac disease. Thyroid nodules. If the thyroid function is abnormally high or low, then the treatments are described as prior. If the thyroid function is normal with thyroid nodules, there are no good medications to shrink the nodules and surgery is usually suggested if necessary. A treatment for goiters is radioactive iodine therapy. This therapy is used commonly in Europe and South America, but is not yet commonly used in the United States. This treatment is considered when the patient has a large non-toxic goiter and there are medical problems that make the patient too high risk for surgery. Goiter. This refers to the abnormal enlargement of the thyroid gland. The presence of a goiter does not necessarily mean that the thyroid gland is malfunctioning. A goiter can occur in a gland that is producing too much hormone hyperthyroidism or too little hormone hypothyroidism. A common cause for this is an iron deficiency, which is more common in countries outside of the United States. Treatments for thyroid disorders via diet. 
Many nutritional factors play a role for the thyroid to function optimally. However, both nutrient deficiencies and excesses can trigger or exacerbate symptoms. Iodine. Iodine is a vital nutrient in the body and essential for thyroid function. Thyroid hormones are composed of iodine, ionized salt, along with fish, dairy, and grains is a major source of iodine. Vitamin D. Vitamin D deficiency is linked to Hashimoto's disease, showing that more than 90% of patients are deficient. Foods that contain some vitamin D include fatty fish, milk, dairy, eggs, and mushrooms. Sunlight is also a potential source of vitamin D, but the amount of vitamin production depends on the season and latitude. If clients have low vitamin D levels, supplemental D3 may be necessary, and the client's physicians should monitor their progress to ensure the individual's levels stay within an appropriate range. Selenium. The thyroid gland is very high in selenium and it's been shown to be necessary component of enzymes integral to the thyroid function. Clients will benefit from having their selenium levels tested and incorporating healthful selenium rich foods into their diet such as tuna, brazil nuts, crab, and lobster. Vitamin B12. Studies have shown that many patients with thyroid disease experience a vitamin B12 deficiency. Food sources of vitamin B12 include liver, mollusks, sardines, salmon, organ meats such as muscle meats and dairy. Vegan sources of vitamin B12 include fortified cereals and nutritional yeast. Severe vitamin B12 deficiencies can be irreversible, so it's important for your clients with thyroid disease to have their levels tested. Goitrogens. These are foods that disrupt the synthesis of thyroid hormones. Vegetables such as broccoli, cauliflower, and cabbage naturally release a compound called goitrin when they're hydrolyzed, aka broken down in the body. So excessive intake of those vegetables could cause complications. Soy is another potential goitrogen. The isoflavins in soy can lower thyroid hormone synthesis, but numerous studies have found that consuming soy doesn't cause excessive blocks, which could cause hypothyroidism. All right, guys, I really hope you learned a lot and also enjoyed the video going over thyroid disorders. If this video helped you out in any way, please do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. You can subscribe by clicking right here or below in the description section. I will also have a link. So stay tuned because in the next few days, we're going to post nursing exam or NCLEX style questions in video format. Or if you would like, you can go to my website, which is right here, and you can take a quiz right away with a ton of questions. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Love you. Bye.